It was a little bit uncomfortable for a while here for Liverpool today, but they got the job done. They were 1-0 down at one stage. We didn't really know who was going to be lining up for them. That was another another point. So they did have to cobble together a bit of a team. They had a few experienced players, quite a few youngsters. Given the chaotic nature of the build-up, Shea, training around clothes for a couple of days, Carabao Cup semi-final postponed. Are you quite impressed with how they got a bit of rhythm going as the match yeah. progressed? Yeah, as I say, second half they made it a lot more comfortable. Um, obviously, there's a bit of a shock when Shrewsbury scored and, you know, the people are thinking, is this team going to respond? Because there was a lot of kids, that's, you know, the starting 11, there's a lot of kids on the pitch today, you know, so... But again, you know, they'll they'll gain a lot of experience from that. A few debuts were handed out. Obviously, we mentioned Kate Gordon got a goal as well. So um, there's a lot of positives tonight for, for Liverpool and his team. It's a weird dynamic, isn't it? You've got to think that some of these players are looking at the... That some of these experienced players probably have never even met these young lads before, John. Hmm. Well, exactly right. And they've not, certainly not played together at this level. Some of them might have come through in the academy, of course. You know, the 19s, 21s. <clears throat> but stepping in and playing at Anfield in front of a crowd mm. is totally different, you know, and uh, the likes of Gordon handled it really well today, one or two others, the likes of Waltman, I thought he looked lively, but Liverpool never really played through the middle, they never used him. Waltman, the young 18-year-old centre-forward, he went off at half-time, Minamino come on, and he could just see that Minamino was getting the ball, he slowed the game down a little bit, he could just see the experience that he had. But Waltman looked, you know, he was... His endeavour was good. He tried to make runs and he's very, very young and it just goes to show he's a good young player but just needs a little bit more time out before he's ready to make that big step into the first team. Firmino came on as well and he really killed the game with the goal of 3 one Shay. Yeah, it was a bit of clash from Firmino mm -hmm. with the back heel but we're surprised maybe he didn't start because he's not played a lot of football mm -hmm. um, for, for different reasons and... Uh, you know, it would have been a good game today maybe to start the game, but you know, there's bigger games on the few, they've got a semi-final coming up on, on Thursday, of course, so maybe Klopp's holding the back foot. But Fabinho does well here and, and young Bradley keeps the ball alive and Canate I think he's not going to score from there because he's a big centre after him up, but it's a brilliant know. run shade, isn't it, from from young Bradley? Yeah. Because Bradley actually makes Fabinho's mind up. Yeah. Because you initially he makes a run and then Fabinho plays him yeah, in a great ball, really yeah. nicely and then and then Fabinho there. Exactly but the right players. You, you know he's gonna that's he'll know what bit, to do from that's, there. That's yeah. just a little bit yeah. of class, isn't it? That's experience. You know, excellent Lovely finish. finish. You're saying you thought he should have been in from the start? just Well, possibly yeah. just to get minutes under his belt. Uh, but the bigger picture is obviously we, we talk about the guys away in the African Cup of Nations, so their three big players are missing there. So maybe he's thinking, I need to keep a few in reserve. You know, for me, it would have been a good game to get some minutes today. But at the same time, he's going to get confidence from a goal like that, of course. And, and, and again, the, the next game is the semi final big game on Thursday night. Fabinho gave you your off air 4 1 prediction that came through <laughs> with the, the Fabinho goal here, John. It was a nice finish as well, to be fair. Yeah, it was a nice finish. Um, again, he, he just he brings that. Um, it, this is Fabinho. It's a really good ball in from Simicus. It's, it's Fabinho actually gets the initial header, and he's first to react, which is uh, really good to see there. Just comes off of the defender, and then he's first to react, and he smashes it into the roof of the net to make it four-one. Probably a little bit harsh on Shrewsbury, um, but as Shea alluded to earlier, the, the penalty could have been. Um, dealt with better, you know, Ebanks Landl didn't have to handball or that. So, you know, they gifted Liverpool a few goals as well, but over the piece, I think Liverpool had 18 efforts on goal, 83% possession. So, they, you know, they went on, they thoroughly deserved to win the game. We're talking about all the young players, but you need those guys to step up on days like this as well, somebody like Fabinho with his experience. Yeah, Fabinho, for, you know, they, they were brilliant in the end. He's two assists. Um, just looking, sorry, that, that, that goal again, and similar to the penalty, the, the Shrewsbury, you know, look at you know, sometimes you get cut open by a great team like Liverpool with great players, but two two wide free kicks, they're mm. so deep. Like the, I, I can't understand why they're so deep. Fabinho gets that first glance and header from probably six yards again, and the penalty just before half time, they were very deep on the so goalkeeper that, as well. That, so then, is that something that a goalkeeper maybe like yourself would you be getting on to oh, the defender and saying right, you're too deep, you've got to go further up? Is that, that then the defenders have to be braver, yeah. though, don't they? Yeah, but I said that at half time, so mine normally would be a two man wall or three man, mm. whatever it is, and then the my line in the middle would take it off that wall. So Shrewsbury's wall is there, and the back they're right, right on top of the goalkeeper. You can, you can see, see it again. How deep here. they are here. It's, it's, it's way too deep. The keeper can't come, and obviously the advantage. Now, they should be starting probably, I would say, nearly in line with the 18 yard box. They're and starting if, inside and, the and penalty. If you spot. give players of the quality, mm -hmm. Simicus came on late for Andy Robertson as a worry because he looked like he got a nasty knock on his ankle. But if you give players that type of room and that type of space to put the balls into, somebody with a delivery like Robertson and Simicus 
you know, they'll hurt you. So would the manager, do you think the manager would have set them up like that in advance or did they just fall into that trap? I don't know, it looks maybe the like they've been set up that way, you know, mm -hmm. because that's they've done that's they've done that every free kick. I was saying that even off air, I was saying, I don't understand why they're so deep. So maybe that's the coaches have set them up is, is that way. Is there an advantage to being deep? I don't see it. you can see. No, no. I don't see it because it just takes a nick even off a defender or an attacking player and it's, it's, it's past the keeper because they're so close and it doesn't give them time to react. Maybe a bit of nerves as well creeping Pipe in there. Tiredness as well. I remember Liverpool, as I alluded to earlier, they, they had the ball for most of the game. So tiredness, when you're tired, you lose that little bit of concentration and maybe that's what it was in the end. But I thought 4-1 um, sort of, not flattered Liverpool, but, it, you know, I think the... F and Akuku said it in commentary. It's a bit harsh on Shrewsbury. They were brave at times. They give everything, but they're up against a quality team, even though Liverpool had several key players out. One of the quality youngsters was Kay Gordon. He's only 17, I think you were mm -hmm. saying, still. Yeah. You've had him at Derby. We can have a look at his contribution in the first half. Maybe a bit quieter after the break, but he was still he was still going strong there. Yeah, again, he's only a kid as well, so he needs to get up to the sort of match pace of, of the last 90 minutes. But, you know, he, he lasted 7 or 80 today, and he's done, done really, really well. We showed clips obviously at half time and, and you know he's a, he's an attacking player only and he gets at people and he makes things happen and, and you know this is one of his first starts for, for Liverpool and he, he's not been phased by the occasion it's a full Anfield and, and, and then he gets his goal uh, as well which is a fantastic finish we, we talked about young Bradley as well from from up the north and he, he linked up really well with, with Cade today and uh, you know we think there's a great pass to him into Cade's feet and then there's no there's no panic. We talk about Firmino's finish being lots of composure and, and an experienced player, but it's the second touch here, Shay, isn't he? He controls it here. And just this little one here. I yeah, love yeah. that with the right foot just to yeah. shift it. But other players with less composure would have hit that and the defender would have blocked it. Yeah. He's just got that sort of coolness in his head and his brain. He just takes that split second and takes the defender out of the game. It's a lovely little finish. Yeah, what did you think of that one, John? Yeah, Gordon, yeah, again, left foot, that really nice cultured left foot. Um he, he looks a really good prospect, doesn't he? Look at his look at his face, but it looks Happy like he's to come off, should yeah. be still at school, like he's, he's so ah, young, like but it, yeah. but as I say, it's just great to see him if he wasn't tonight. Yeah, the stuff because we saw who was it? Um Dixon Bonner miss his shot at, at glory, you know. I don't want to be writing lads in or out of the future at uh, Liverpool based on one game, but you you just really want the young lads to take those yeah. opportunities. It, didn't it almost for looked Bonner. as if he thought he'd scored yeah. before he put it in the back of the net. He was almost off celebrating because he was such a glorious chance for him, really. But, um, you know, a Dixon Bonner, again, another one who's come on today. I think it was his debut, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it looks good. Yeah, yeah. That game, was his yeah. first game, yeah. Let's have a look at where are we going. Oh, yeah, the, I mean, let's give Shrewsbury their due here because they gave Liverpool a bit of a scare in the first half with uh, Daniel Udo. Yeah, we, we see it here. It's, it's Ogbeta, who, who actually was really good in the first half. He was um, positive. He was running at the um, running at Bradley, and that's a really good finish from Udo. He just attacks the space, attacks the area. That's what he does. I think Bradley should be looking. I know he's young; he's got a lot to learn. But just stop, try and stop that cross coming in. But credit to Ogbeta, puts it in a great area for the centre forward to run into. And um, all Udo has to do really is get in between the two centre halves and make sure he directs his foot you know, on the ball to hit the target, but it's a wonderful goal. This is Liverpool finishing the job, Shay, before mm -hmm. half-time, or certainly yeah. getting, getting things going. Yeah, I want to change my uh, story about the deepness, but it's just it's just it's winding me up, because obviously I played in the position, so no, I just feel that they're very deep. I was doing sort of set-play coach at Derby as well, so I look at all the set-plays, it's a, a huge part of the game, and, and, and Shrewsbury, as I say, can get opened up by a great Liverpool team, but that's just so disappointing in the stroke of half-time as well, to give a penalty as simple as that with your hand up in there. You were annoyed by it. I don't know if that's the way to phrase well, it, John, but it's a silly thing to do, obviously. Well, it's a silly thing to do. It's, it's just, it's, it's almost gifting Liverpool a goal. I know they still got to take the penalty, which Fabinho did really well. But Steve Cotter would have been saying today, let's be solid, especially from set pieces. If, if Liverpool scored a goal against us, let's make, them, let's make them work for their goal, do something really, really good, that they're better than us. But when you're gifting goals two minutes just before half-time, you know, he must be, you know, sort of scratching his head, thinking, "Well, what can I do about that?" You expect more from your from your centre backs. What do you think of your Liverpool fan now, more generally, Shay? This game is done. Safety through the next round of the cup. The league yeah. looks as though it's probably gone. You've got Mane and and Salah and Keita gone for the next few games as mm. well. Are you in, in, a, in a positive frame of mind or no? Hmm. <laughs> well, they're 11 points behind Man City, of course. Uh, they've got a game in hand. Um, I think it's too big a too big an ask. You know, you're looking at Man City, the way they're playing at the minute, the quality they have, the squad of players that they have. Um, I don't think they'll be able to catch them. You know, it's probably maybe Man City head on, but 
I just think there's too many points to make up. Um, big game, obviously, on Thursday night. They've got a semi-final of the League Cup coming up. And obviously, in the next round of the FA Cup, I think Jurgen Klopp maybe has to take the cup competition a bit more serious because mm -hmm. I do think that the Premier League's maybe beyond them now. That's an interesting point, yeah. Cup competitions, you were making the point, it's been a long time since Liverpool won the FA Cup before. Yeah, and it's, it's the one trophy that's eluded uh, Jurgen Klopp, isn't it? Um, there's no Champions League football, I think it's Europa League football if you win the FA Cup. Uh, same for the League Cup. But um, Man City just look relentless. And uh, you do wonder whether Liverpool, I believe they will finish in the top four, they're good enough you know, to be right up there. But um, he may well look at it and think, well, the FA Cup, let's get a trophy in the cabinet. Liverpool are you know, famously known for winning trophies. Uh, let's go and add the FA Cup. That's one trophy I haven't got. Do they need to sign any new players in January? Let's talk that they might, might have a look in the market. Well, I thought of a forward, but they have Jota, who didn't, who didn't play today. You know, Firmino they have, they have Origi. Mm. Um, so I think they're, they're probably covered in that area, really, Liverpool. Um, defensively, um, uh, Kanate has come in, 36 million from Leipzig, alongside Van Dijk. Matip was on the bench today. So I think they got cover, really, in most areas, but... Like other, like most managers, mm. Shay, they they're not happy with not doing any business. I'm sure Jurgen Klopp will, will still be banging on the chairman's door looking for maybe one or two. Yeah, he might do. They don't panic buy though either, do they? Mm. They don't. Certainly over the last couple of seasons, they've they've been quite clever in how they've strengthened the squad. Yeah. Not that every signing has worked out, you know, but yeah, they, January, they don't just January buy one as well. I think January is relatively a tough month to get you know top players, and we're talking about a brilliant squad of players. Obviously, Liverpool got a great great squad of players there, and. and and it needs a top, top player to make them better. And if, the, if that player's not in the market in January, you know, Jurgen Klopp has said himself, I don't want a big, massive squad to be loads of lads on the bench every week unhappy and, and knock on my door down, you know. So if the quality's not there, they probably won't go for it. You made the point just to me in the last couple of minutes there that Andy Robertson going off injured could be a problem as well because when they do have some squad yeah. members missing, what, the last thing you need is any injuries on top of the COVID and the absences yeah. to the international tournaments. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Robertson's played a lot of football as well. He's played so many games. And he's probably one of the first... Mm. You know, players on the team sheet, and Simicas is naturally left back. We've seen him set up the, you know, the final goal there, great delivery, and I, and I felt it was an oral opportunity maybe to play Simicas from the start and, and keep Andy up his sleeve. And I don't know how bad the injury is. It was I think young Daniels came on. We spoke about him. He came on yeah, and, the and he left his man. mark on somebody at Anfield today. But uh, <laughs> I don't think Andy Robertson will be too happy. Yeah, probably not. Okay, listen, we can tell you we had another game on today. It was the Spurs.